Welcome to our electron line. So what do we do when we have twice as much charge on each of the two objects, the spherical objects? Well, we'll have twice as many lines, but again, since there's the same number of positive charges as there are negative charges, it makes it relatively easy. Let's start with the ones where they're opposed to one another. We have these two charges close to each other, so we'll draw this line first. We'll go straight across. And then we realize that the two on the opposite ends, we have a line going straight out this way and a line coming straight in this way. But what about the others? Well, as long as we adhere to the rules where the lines must leave and enter perpendicular to the surface, that means we'll have a line, a line leaving like this, a line leaving like this, and a line leaving like that, and on the other side, because of symmetry, exactly the same, like so. But then they have to curve towards the negative charges. So again, they'll be arriving like this, like this, and like this, like this, like this, and like that. So now we can start making the connections. So here we have a slight bend, and we do the same over here. It's always easier to do the symmetry first. So you do one on one side, one on the other side. Now this one here will go up and start curving. So this one will come around and go like this, and this one will come around and go like that. I may have gone a little bit too far away, but that's okay. You get the, the drift of what that looks like. Now the next one will eventually end up over here, but that will be so far out that we can't draw the whole picture. So you can go ahead and start drawing it like this. And actually, I shouldn't curve it quite that quickly. I'll try it again. So it goes out like that. But eventually, you would expect it to reach the other side. And the same one over here. So this starts curving like that. And this starts curving like that. But typically, that's how we leave it because it'll be a long ways before they start combining again. But that's what you would expect to see in an electric field. What's nice about drawing the lines like this is now you can, for example, put any test charge in there. For example, if I put a test charge in here, or I put a test charge in there, or I put a test charge in here, and I want to figure out what will be the direction of the force experienced by that test charge, and then you simply go ahead and, of course, what I also want to do is draw the little arrows in there so we can see the direction of the electric field. So the arrows are like this. Oh, and here, of course, the arrows towards the negative charge. So, and then here it would be away from the charge. So then I can see over here, it looks like the force would be something like this. That would be the force. Over here, the force would be kind of like that. And do we have another test charge somewhere? Oh, there's one. And here you can see that the force would be something like this. And so that's the purpose of the field lines, to give you a feel of what the electric field looks like, what would be the direction of the forces of any test charge you place within the field, and so forth. And that's how it's done.